I'm back in this video, of course, but I'm also back in Åra, the most famous and biggest ski resort in Sweden. Yesterday we had a gig with a band where I was the band leader, so I thought I'd go through what a band leader does before and during a gig like that. I heard someone say that being a band leader is not a job, it's a punishment. It's the most amount of work with the least amount of appreciation. Well, maybe they're right. Let's figure that out in this video, how much work it is to be a band leader. Usually it starts with me getting a phone call from an event company or a production company. Sometimes from the artists, but it's rare. And I always ask questions like where, when, what kind of gig is it, what is the budget, how many guests are there, is there a dress code? So I get a feeling of what gig it is. Then it's time for me to call some musicians. I wonder if you can sing background vocals. Well, it's April 27th. Yeah, I need a drummer. Are you the one? <laughs> I know you are. Sometimes it takes several attempts because the first drummer is not available, the second drummer have broken his arm and the third and so on. For this gig it was rather smooth. I got a band together rather quickly. When I've found a band I make a Spotify list with all the songs. Some songs I write myself, especially if there's jingles like entrance, outro, maybe they have a prize ceremony or something, I write those jingles. So I also write sheet music for all the songs. And I try to keep the sheet music as simple as possible, just to write the most essential things in the song. It could look something like this for the drums and bass, and something like this for the keyboard. And here's the guitar. If you want to know how I think when I write the sheet music, let me know and I will make a video about that. One thing to remember is that I need to know what every instrument in the song are playing so I can write it down. I also need to know what the drummer wants to see on a paper, what the guitarist wants to see on a paper and so on to be able to write the sheet music. I sent the sheet music as PDF and also Spotify list to the musicians, including some notes. And the notes could be things like, is it another intro or outro than the original? Is another key? Do we have to make different sounds on the keyboards and the guitars, for example? And how the choir should be on each song and which musician that should sing each harmony? And this emailing thing goes back and forth. I get questions about it and I answer it and I send out more information and I get questions about that, which I answer and so on. And now it's time for me to check with the event company once again. I need to know things like, how's the transportation to the gig? Is there parking places for all the cars? When can we get access to the stage? How does the stage look like? What uh, company have the technique, the sound and light, so I can send them information? Do we have lunch? Do we have dinner? Do we have snacks? Do we have a changing room? Do we have a storage for our cases? All those things I then write down and send to my musicians, which I get questions about, which I answer. <laughs> I also do a technical writer for the sound and light engineer with a suggested stage plot where I also write something about miking, what instruments we bring, how we want our monitoring system, if we use in-ear or if, or if we use wedges, things like that. And I also write every band member's name on that technical writer. It's so much smoother to work if the sound engineer knows what he or she should call us. Yeah, finally, I can start working with what, what I'm going to do on this performance. Finally, I can start practice myself and program some sounds that I'm comfortable playing with. <sighs> finally. Yeah. 
sound check this ancient relic of human torture. During the day of the performance, it's usually a rehearsal because it hasn't been a rehearsal before. I have to trust the musicians that I've hired that they have done their job. They have learned the songs, the harmonies, the form, the structure. Normally this works very well because I hire musicians I can trust. In this case, we had four local artists and also a host that did a couple of songs. So totally it was 11 songs on this show. And I wrote a time schedule beforehand, which we need to keep during that day. And that's easier said than done when you're dealing with musicians. During the rehearsal, my job is to see that everything works, communicate with the artist, communicate with the sound engineer, communicate with the musicians, but also listen if we need to do changes. Normally, I try to keep the musicians as free as possible to do their thing, but sometimes I need to go in and adjust things like, are we playing too laid back? Are we playing too stressed? Are we playing with too little dynamics between the verse and the chorus and so on? And also, I need to play it myself. And I need to listen to everything at the same time. When the rehearsal is over, it's time for show, and my job as a band leader is practically over. Hopefully now we can concentrate on doing a good gig, a good performance, including me, and be relaxed and have fun with music, because music is rather fun. Do you think there's a lot of work being a band leader or not? Please leave a comment about it. Band leader in Swedish is kapellmästare. Kapellmästare. Until next time, Roger that. Oh,